basically uh, has been cursed by God, then it'll be a sign that she truly was guilty. And now people are not going to be angry with her husband because he accused her because she has proven her God has proven her to be guilty of this of this sin. Yes. What happens if the woman refuses to go before the court? Well, she gets stoned to death. What do you think would happen? She's going to die, isn't she? She can't refuse. It's like the no dr- the n- the non-denial option for the police department. Yeah. If you don't take the test, then you are drunk. <laughs> Period. That's it. Yeah. If you uh, let me not only do a breathalyzer, but pull some blood from you, uh-uh. then we can take it down and prove what your alcohol t- content mm-hmm. is. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And so if they refuse, then they're admitting their own guilt. Mm-hmm. Does anybody have another comment or question? Okay. So there's n- there isn't a denial option. Mm-hmm. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Oh. Yeah. Is this still readable? Can you read it okay on the broadcast? Okay. Then hmm? Hmm. Let's see. So the woman is supposed to respond, Amen. What does amen mean? Yes? What? He said so be it. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean so be it. <coughs> well, what's the grammatical error there? What's the amen to the amen? Amen <laughs> should be singular, shouldn't it? Yeah. But men are plural. Anyway, I'm just... <laughs> That's a grammatical error. It's not if you're in English. Anyway, or in Hebrew, whatever the case may be. Um, so sh- she's supposed to say amen, amen. What does amen mean? It's the, the letters are our acronym for El Melech Naamin. El means God. Melech, the king. Naamin is faithful to accomplish the words that he has spoken. It means all that. So he says, amen, amen, which means literally God is going to perform this. God is going to perform this. Accomplish it. That's right. God is faithful to accomplish it. That's because it's in his word. So the coin is to write these curses on a scroll, wash them off into the water of embitterment, and make the woman drink the water of embitterment and cursing. The water of cursing will enter her and become bitter, and the coin is to remove the grain offering of, or jealousy from the woman's hand, wave the grain offering before Yahweh, and bring it to the altar. The coin is to take a handful of the grain offering as its reminder portion and make it go up in smoke, and that's the Ola sacrifice for it. Um, and he's to uh, make it go up in smoke on the altar. And afterwards, he's to make the woman drink the water. And when she has made her drink the water, then if she is unclean and has been unfaithful to her husband, the water that causes a curse will enter her and become bitter so that her abdomen swells and her private parts shrivel up and the woman will become an object of cursing among her people. But if the woman is not unclean, but is clean, then she will become innocent and will have children. And this is the law for the jealousy. When either a wife or 
under her husband's authority goes out astray and becomes unclean. Or the spirit of jealousy comes over her husband, he becomes jealous to his wife. Then he is to place the woman before Yahweh, and the Kohen is to deal with her in accordance with the Torah. The husband will clear, be clear of the guilt, but the wife will bear the consequences of her fruit. Yahweh said to Moses, tell the people of Israel. Oh, I want to go back. When that happens, and she's not guilty, then the Bible says he's not allowed to put her away ever again. Never. Because he has a spirit of jealousy. That's him, not her. So therefore, sh- he's to bear the, the responsibility for that if he's, if he's brought false charges against her. Yes, that was the Ola offering. Uh huh. What happened to the remainder of the grain? It belongs to the priest. It's sin offering. And what happened to the husband? Well, he doesn't get to divorce her ever again. Or make a claim against her. Or make a claim against her ever again. Because it will be denied. (coughs) Yahweh said to Moses. This is uh, chapter six. Chapter six, verse one. Yahweh said to Moses, "Tell the people of Israel when either a man or a woman makes a special kind of a vow, the vow of a nazir, consecrating himself or herself to Yahweh. It's for women too, by the way. He is to abstain, abstain from wine under and other intoxicating liquors." He is not to drink vinegar from a bit from either source. He is not to drink grape juice. He is not to eat the grapes or the raisins. As long as he remains in Nazir, he is to eat nothing derived from the grapevine, not even the grape skins or the seeds. Mm. No, he cannot even smoke the grapevine. Mm. <laughs> 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 That's the truth. Throughout the period of his vow, a Nazir is not to shave his head until the end of the time for which he has consecrated himself to Yahweh. He is to be holy. He is to let the, the hair of his head grow long. <laughs> now it's not forwarding for me. Throughout the period of his vow, he is a Nazir. He is not to shave his head until the end of the time for which he has consecrated himself to Yahweh. He is to be holy. He is not to let the hair on his head, oh, he is to let the hair on his head grow long. Throughout the period for which he has consecrated himself to Yahweh, he is not to approach a corpse. He cannot touch a dead body, even for his mother or his father or his brother or his sister. When they die, since his consecration to God is on his head, throughout the time of his being a Nazir, he is holy unto Yahweh. Sir? Um, is there occasion where um, is there occasion where a Levite can take a vow like that and become a Nazir? It's it's a re- it's a uh, non question. The Levi is already dis- already dedicated to Yahweh throughout his entire life. Not as a Nazir, but as a Levi. Mm-hmm. This vow is for those who are not Levi. Mm-hmm. Such as the Kohanim are all Levi, but they are the priesthood. The Levites are not priesthood, but they are a part of the Levite tribe responsible for the uh, temple service. Huh? A Levite can enjoy wine, right? Oh, yeah. But they are not to do it while they're serving in the temple. Not even the high priest can do that. While he's serving before God in the temple, they don't want him consuming alcoholic beverages because he has to be very careful with the prayers and the things that he is quoting directly from Scripture that must be maintained. If he is drunk, 
he won't be able to put two words together, let alone the whole prayer. So the high priest and the Levites who are serving in the temple cannot drink alcohol during the time of their service in the temple. That'll be by chorus. Uh, remember when um, uh, Yeshua was born that uh, Miriam was uh, pregnant with uh, uh, Yeshua and uh, her sister Elizabeth, her cousin Elizabeth was pregnant with Yochanan, the uh, the Mercer. He was uh, a high priest. He was a part of the high priest family, and he could um, he could pretty much drink anything he wants any time he wants, except while he's serving in the temple. The priests are exactly the same. They can only uh, they cannot drink any intoxicating liquids while they are in service in the temple. And the reason they stated that way is because there are times when they're released from their duties and another priest would take over and, and uh, do his role as the high priest. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Would they ever think for them to be drunk sometimes? The scripture doesn't tell them they can't be drunk. And God says wine makes glad the heart of man and of God. So drinking wine doesn't mean you're not going to be a part of the holy community. But it does mean that while you're drunk, you cannot serve in the temple. Is that helpful? Yeah. Okay. Um, Rabbi? Yes? Doesn't it also say some? I can't recall where, but that if you... I think it was uh, Rob Shaul uh, who said it, that uh, if you are going to get drunk then do it in your home yeah it's okay to get drunk just don't let it come into the holy community where you're misbehaving that helpful okay okay so through the period for which he has consecrated himself this starting in verse 6 consecrated himself unto Yahweh, he is not to approach a corpse, any corpse, period, ever, while he's serving in the role of the Nazir. Because doing so would cause him to be defiled, and then he has defiled Yahweh by doing that. Can't do that. He is not to make himself unclean for his father or his mother, brother, sister, when they die, since his consecration to God is on his head. In other words, his long hair is a symbol of his consecration. Throughout the time of his being a Nazir, he is holy for Yahweh. If someone next to him dies very suddenly so that he defiles his dis consecrated head, then he is to shave his head on the day of his purification He's got to go through a purification, and once he's done the purification, then he is going to be uh, purified. Um, he's to shave his hair on the day that he is consecrated. Again, purification. He is to shave it on the seventh day. Yes, ma'am. A Nazir is a person who has made a vow to live a separated life unto Yahweh for a set period of time. Mm -hmm. They can go in and serve with the priesthood, the Kohanim, uh, or the Levites in the temple service. Mm -hmm. They can do most anything that anyone from the tribe of Levi can do, except they cannot take the role of the high priest. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's see. If someone next to him dies very suddenly so that he defiles his consecrated head, then he has to shave his head. Uh, on the day of his purification, he has to shave it on the seventh day. So after he's been purified and, and cleansed, the seventh day he has to shave his hair, all, all the hair off of his 
uh, head. And on the eighth day, he is to bring two doves or two young pigeons to the Kohen at the entrance of the tent of the meeting. The Kohen is to prepare one as a sin offering and the other as a burnt offering, thus to make for him atonement inasmuch as he has sinned because of the dead person. He's not allowed to touch a dead person even accidentally. Cannot be. The same day he is to be reconsecrate, he is to reconsecrate his ha- head. He is to consecrate to Yahweh the full period of his being a Nazir by bringing a male lamb in its first year as a guilt offering. The previous days will not be counted because of his consecration has become defiled. So he has to start the days of his vow over even if he was on the last day. This is the law for the Nazir when his period of consecration is over. He is to be brought to the entrance of the tent of the meeting where he will present his offering to Yahweh, one male lamb in its first year without defect as a burnt offering, one female lamb in its first year without defect as a sin offering, one ram without defect as a peace offering, a basket of matzah loaves made of fine flour mixed with olive oil, unleavened wafers spread with olive oil, their grain offering and their drink offerings. The Kohen is to bring them before Yahweh, offer his sin offering and his burnt offering and his ram as a sacrifice of peace offerings to Yahweh with the basket of matzah. The Kohen will also offer the grain offerings and drink offerings so to go with that peace offering. Um, da, 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 the Nazir will have shave his, uh, his consecrated head at the entrance to the tent of the meeting, take the hair removed from his consecrated head, put it on the fire under the sacrifice of the peace offerings, and when the ram has been boiled, the Kohen is to take its shoulder, one loaf of matzah, um, boiled oh, one loaf of matzah from the basket and the one unleavened wafer and place them in the hands of the Nazir. After he has shaved and consecrated his hand, the Kohen is to wave them as a wave offering before Yahweh and set aside for the Kohen along with the breast for waving the raised up thigh following that the Nazir may eat, may drink wine. What in, huh? Repeat. Yeah. What in all of these r- readings stuck out to you? What did anything strike you as odd? Give me some examples. Uh, yeah, I did. Right. What else? Um, shaving all their head, all their he- facial hair and everything. Mm-hmm. What else? Yeah, that's just what I, shaving them all completely. Wow. What else? Anybody else? There was I something you missed that was very important. In this yeah. chapter? In chapter 6? Uh, no. It was up here. In the, yeah, it was in chapter 6. Look in verse 14. What do you see that strikes you as odd? A he lamb, a year old, without blemish, mm-hmm. for burnt offering. Mm-hmm. One mm-hmm. ewe lamb. Oh! One ewe lamb. That's right. There are only a few places in the Torah where a ewe a lamb or a female word. lamb is, is commanded to be sacrificed as a sin offering. We bumped into one uh, a few weeks ago. I think it was when we were reading about the lambs for the Passovers yeah, or for some of the holy days in there. It, it instructed us to take a ewe lamb for a sin offering. And that struck me. And I was like, okay, I didn't think that God commanded for a ewe lamb to be sacrificed at any time. I missed all the times that it said ewe lamb. Here's another one right here. So the ewe lamb is to be used for a sin offering in this place. 
But it's for a special reason. It's, it's for the Nazir who has made a vow and he's to be uh, using the ewe lamb as a sin sacrifice. It's a very special vow. Isn't that interesting though? Because yeah. yeah. the only other time a female is called upon to be a uh, burnt offering or a sin sac sac excuse me, sacrifice is the red heifer. A heifer is a female uh, cow. And so the red heifer has to be used for that uh, sacrifice of the, uh, uh, for the, the ashes of the cleansing. Okay. So I think my mind, when I see those, uh, those commands that a uh, ewe lamb or a female lamb is supposed to be offered up, I go, Boing! What is this? <laughs> you know, I, I didn't see these before. Why am I? Why did I miss all of these? You know, so the word heifer doesn't necessarily catch your attention because you don't realize that a heifer is a female, but it is. And it's supposed to be what solid red? Solid red with no more than two white hairs in it wow. is all that's allowed. If it has two white hairs in it, the third hair makes it disqualified. <laughs> wow. Perfectly purely red. And and all of this happened, you know, to the to the to the people just because I saw uh, the um, family die and they torched the body. No, they don't torch the body. Not in Israel. She said touch. Touch. Oh, touch, touch the body. Oh, yeah. yeah. If they come anywhere near close enough to be defiled, which means that they have touched their clothing even. Even if they don't touch the body, if they touch the clothing, they become defiled. Any other comments or questions? This is the law for the Nazir when his period of consecration is over. He's to be brought, and that's when he brings his female lamb in its first year. Okay. It has to be more than eight days old, and it has to be uh, less than two years old. Okay. The coin is to bring them before Yahweh, offer his sin offering on. Oh, I had already read all this. Yeah. Uh, when the ram has been boiled, the coin is to take its shoulder, one loaf of matzah from the basket, one unleavened wafer, place them in the hands of the Nazir, and he has, after he has shaved and consecrated his head, the coin is to wave them as a wave offering before Yahweh, and this is set aside for the coin, along with the breast for waving and a raised up thigh. Following that, the Nazir may drink wine. This is the law for the Nazir. He makes a vow for his offering to Yahweh for his being a Nazir, in addition to anything more for which he has sufficient means. In keeping whatever the vow he makes, he must do it according to the law of the Nazir. Yahweh said, to Moses, speak to Aaron and his sons and tell them that this is how you are to bless the people of Israel. You are to say to them, May Yahweh bless and keep you. May Yahweh make his face to shine upon you and show his favor. May Yahweh lift up his face towards you and give you peace. In this way, they are to put my name on the people of Israel so that I will bless them. On the day that Moses finished putting up the tabernacle, he anointed and consecrated it, all of his furnishings, and the altar with its utensils. After anointing and consecrating them, the leaders of Israel, who were heads of their families' clans, 
made an offering. These were the tribal leaders in charge of those counted in the census. They brought their offering before Yahweh, six covered wagons and 12 oxen, a wagon for every two liters and for, for each ox, each an ox, and presented them in front of the tabernacle. So what was the ox for? What do you use oxes for? The ox was for, for plowing for well, and for pulling uh, wa loaded wagons. Okay? They weren't for barbecuing. Okay? Um, so they brought their offering before Yahweh, and there were six covered wagons with 12 oxen. A wagon for every two liters and for each an ox, and presented them in front of the tabernacle. Yahweh said to Moses, Receive them from them. They are to be used in for the service of the tent of the meeting. Give them to the Levites, uh, to each as needed for his duty. So Moses took the wagons, oxen, and gave them to the Levim, and he gave two wagons and four oxen to the descendants of Gershom, in keeping with the needs of their duty. Four wagons and eight oxen he gave to the descendants of Morari, in keeping with the needs of their duties, directed by Etamar, the son of Aaron, and the, Co the Cohen. But to the descendants of Kahat he gave none, because their duties involved the holy artic articles which they carried on their own shoulders. So that's why they needed so many of them, even though they were only dealing with the holy place. The leaders brought the offering for the dedication, for dedicating the altar on the day it was anointed. The leaders brought their offering before the altar, and Yahweh said to Moses, they are to present their offerings to dedicate the altar, each leader, on his own day. So they went in, in shifts and brought their own offerings and their own uh, off sacrifices to God. Nachshan, Nachshan, the son of Amenadav from the tribe of Yehuda, presented his offering on the first day. He or offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, which is three and one quarter pounds of, sh of silver. Oh, and one silver basin weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds. One silver basin of 70 shekels, used in the sanctuary shekel, one and three quarters pounds, both full of fine flour mixed with olive oil for grain offering. One gold pan of 10 shekels, one and a quarter pounds. That's an expensive mm -hmm. offering, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So uh, one gold pan of 10 shekels, one quarter pounds full of incense, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year as a burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of the peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, and five male lambs in their first year. This was the offering of Nakshon, the son of Amenadav. Now this isn't just for uh, Nakshon, it's not just for him, but it's for his entire family, his entire troop of service, all of the people that were, were in his census for the work that he was going to be doing. So that's, that was why there were so many peace offerings for them was because it was for that whole clan. On the second day, Nathaniel, the son of Tsuar, leader of Issachar, presented his offering. He offered one silver dish weighing 130 shekels, three and a quarter pounds, one silver basin of 70 shekels, um, that's one and three quarters pounds, both full of fine flour mixed with olive oil, one gold pan of 10 shekels, one young bull of 10 shekels, it was filled with incense by the way, 
one, one young bull, one ram, one male lamb in its first year of the burnt offering, one male goat as a sin offering, and for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams, five male goats, five male lambs in the first year. This was the offering of Nathaniel, the son of Shuar. Huh? He offered oxen. I don't remember seeing oxen in the previous one. Yeah, it was. It was? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll go back and show you. Uh, in verse 17, for the sacrifice of peace offerings, two oxen, five rams. So the two oxen were a sacrifice for the peace offering. Mm-hmm. Understand? Mm-hmm. Thank you. I thought my Okay. You understand, I said. <laughs> but we just keep on going in the same way through all of these. And we're just about out of time. Tenth day, on the eleventh day, Pagiel, the son of Achran. Now, this is the whole chapter where I saw oxen being used Mm -hmm. for offerings. For the sacrifice of peace offerings, here it is again, two oxen, five rams, five male goats. This was the offering for dedicating the altar, which was given by the leaders of Israel in the day of of its anointing. Twelve several silver dishes, twelve silver basins, twelve gold pans. Each silver dish weighed 130 shekels, and each basin, 20 70 shekels of one and three quarters pounds. All silver of the vessels weighing 2,400 shekels. That's a lot of shekels. <laughs> Using the sanctuary sake, just over 60 pounds of shekels of gold. 12 gold pans full of incense weighed 10 shekels apiece. Using these, so that's 120 uh, shekels of gold. Full of incense, weighed 10 shekels apiece using the sanctuary shekel, one and a quarter pounds. So that would be uh, 2,400 shekels. Mm. The livestock for the burnt offering consisted of 12 bulls, 12 rams, 12 male lambs in the first year with their grain offerings, and there were 12 male goats for sin offering. The livestock for the sanctuary, the peace offerings. So we can just keep on going. So... um, then Moses went into the tent of the meeting ordered in order to speak with Yahweh, and he heard the voice speaking to him from above the ark cover. In case you're confused, mm-hmm. it was above the ark cover where the cherubim were, the ark of the testimony. From between the two kerubim, he spoke to him. Yahweh spoke to him. Mm-hmm. Yahweh mm-hmm. spoke to him. Mm-hmm. Yahweh oh, spoke so to him. <laughs> <laughs> So that's it for today. Oh, yeah. We've had a good reading of the Torah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Y'all enjoy that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I hope the uh, details about these things kind of made it a little more interesting. <laughs> that's what it did. They put it made sure to get the details. Mm-hmm. 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 What's that in Spanish? Uh, huh. Is not in Spanish. You read it English, okay, or Spanish better? Yeah, she can. I can read Spanish. Marta? I can read that. I don't read the Spanish. <laughs> so you read the Bible in English? Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yes. Just wonder. Yes. And, and I see my grandma and grandpa, they speak English, uh, Spanish, because when I came over here, um, I wanted to, s- to speak English, and I... And uh, I kept hearing pianos. Nobody over here can speak Spanish. Nobody. Yep. Nobody. And so um, we always watching Mr. Rogers. Oh, uh, uh-huh. And says yeah. I'm okay. speak. Mm-hmm. And Mr. Well, Rogers. Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you be my neighbor? They help us a lot. Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, wow. I had a friend of mine who couldn't read English, 
Sure. He couldn't read any language, but he, he just was ignorant. And he started reading the Bible because he prayed, said, God, I don't understand this. Please help me understand it. He could sound out the words, but he didn't know what they meant. And so he kept praying, Lord, show me this. Teach me this. And as he went, he started picking it up, and God showed him how to read it in English. And now he could read it in English as good as I can. Yeah, that's, that's on the words in the Bible that I, I can't pronounce. Mm -hmm. You know, the pronunciation is hard for me. So, especially the names, specific names, mm -hmm. you know. Dishonor, oh, so you have trouble with that too. I thought I was the only one. But <laughs> <laughs> I asked the Lord, I asked ask the Lord, the Lord, help me to understand, you know, when when I read the Bible. And um, and he does because mm -hmm. I, I really, uh, um, I, I, I I have in my mind a lot that, 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 that I read mm -hmm. in the Bible, a lot, and, and a lot of questions too, you know. Why don't you get the uh, closing ceremony equipment, please? Off of here. Oh, yeah, I'm Thank sorry. You. Can you set this over there, too? You can just lean back on its little foot back there. And here's. Put it by the, just down there by the laptop so I can see it when I pick it up. I got it. Thank you. Well, we've had uh, not church. No. We've had synagogue. Well, not synagogue. We have had Kahilat uh, Torah. <laughs> The, the judgment house of the Torah. <laughs> Amen. We have a time with the Lord. You yes. betcha. Mm -hmm. You can tell Marcella I miss her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ronic benediction. Hmm? Did you want to do a Ronic benediction? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Let's do the ironic benediction, and it's up there already. So, Yevarekha Adonai veYishmarecha, Yaer Adonai penavilecha vechunecha, Yisa Adonai penavilecha vayaseim lecha. Shalom. Amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you shalom. Give Amen. you peace. Amen. Amen. Baruch Hashem. And now, go to camera one. Baruch Hashem. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has created the fruit of the vine. Amen. 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 Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by your commandments and command us concerning the washing of our hands.
Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, ha'motzi lechem min ha'aretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us for this worship of Yahweh on his specially selected day. Mm -hmm. This is his choice. Yes. We're obeying his commandment. Mm -hmm. Another good one we can obey and follow and check off of our list, our to-do list, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> and uh, it's not our bucket list because <laughs> we do this first. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> So I hope you uh, had a, a good Sabbath service with us, and we hope that you will join us again next week. Yes. And also, we ask you to consider joining us on Tuesday night for our Bible study class. Mm -hmm. We have a little more time to get deep into the Word then, and uh, love to have you join us for it. Yes. Even if you can't do it here, you can do it online. Amen. So. And if you want to know what the next Torah reading is, you can find it on our website at tzion.org. Click on the Torah reading schedule, scroll down to the date, and you will find that the next Torah reading, Be'alotecha. And you look on the, the, follow, the coming Sabbath in order to find it. Right. Right, okay. right, right. Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Havarim, Shalom, Shalom. Laitrayot, Laitrayot, Shalom, Shalom. Shalom, my friend, Shalom, my friend, Shalom, Shalom. Till we meet again, till we meet again, shalom, shalom, shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom, shabbat 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 shalom. Hey, shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom, shabbat 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 shalom, shabbat 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 shalom, shabbat 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 shalom, shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shabbat shalom. Well, until again. next time, may God continue to smile upon you so you can join us again next weekend or mm -hmm. on Tuesday, as the case may be. Amen. Oh, yes. yes. Hallelujah. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.